is covering the spread. Part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. I don't think I could have planned a week off any better because when you come back from a week away from work, you're kind of groggy. You don't really want to work or anything like that. And it's not exactly where you want to dive back in both feet first and go full out. Luckily for me, I'm coming back for the MLB All-Star break, which means things are a little bit quieter. Things are a little bit uh, slower around here, which means we can ease our way back in, but still have some fun because the Home Run Derby to me has always been One of the best events the entire summer. So we're going to break down the Derby for tonight. Talk about hopefully some things I'm seeing. Maybe talk about some first round matchups some bets that I like to get you ready to enjoy tonight's Derby in a fun, fun way. Welcome on into covering the spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire. Here to preview tonight's MLB Home Run Derby breaking down Hopefully some spots where we can see some value based on the odds over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Do you want to extend a big thank you to Austin Swain for filling in for me across this past week, giving you some insights on Monday and then Wednesday through Friday. Austin, thank you as always. Thank you to Tom Vecchio as well for filling in for me over on the solo shot. You'll be hearing from those guys again in the not-too-distant future, but I'm here for a bit, so you got to deal with me uh, for right now. If you're watching over on FanDuel TV or the FanDuel YouTube page, apologies for the lack of setup. I just moved, waiting for all of our stuff to arrive. So you'll see no hat, Jim, finally back in the fold, unfortunately, because if I put my hat on, it looks like I'm in a hostage video. So we're going to go without the hat for a bit to make things a bit brighter. We'll get back to regular format next week once our stuff fully arrives and hopefully make things a bit more aesthetically pleasing for those of you on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 you can spend on betting everything from the money lines to over-unders to who you think is going to win, uh, hit the first home run. On an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use, plus when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So sign up today and get up to $200 in bonus bets. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire 10 days or 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey. Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. 1 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1 800 9 with it in Indiana. 1 800 522 4700 or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1 877 770 Stop in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. Visit 1 800 Gambler.net in West Virginia or Call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. Or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Now, before we talk about the actual derby itself for tonight, we do want to go through a couple of factors to consider when trying to make your bets. You know, what things matter when betting the home run derby? And the full disclosure here is, I don't know. I can go back and look at previous derbies and try to find trends in that. Not trends like, oh, blah, 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 but like identify factors that matter for those. And maybe they matter here. But in all reality... I don't know. So I am making an educated guess, and I want you to take that into consideration if you're making bets based on this analysis where I don't have a model to decipher this. So there is more guesswork involved here than I typically like when we're talking about things here on the show. But again, it's fun. So uh, proceed with caution for sure. The big thing to consider typically is the park because obviously parks are different. They are not congruent where it could be much better for righties than for lefties. And that is the case this year because the overall home run park factor at T-Mobile Park is 98 at Baseball Savant. 
uh, with 100 being average there. So overall, it's 98, just a bit below average. But it's 104 for righties and 90 for lefties. So right-handed batters would have a pretty big leg up. And I went into this thinking, because I hadn't looked at the field yet, thinking, okay, cool, just, you know, fade the lefties. But the only guy in the derby who is not a righty is Adley Rutschman. He's a switch hitter. And he said he'll likely start batting left-handed and may switch during the round to keep things fresh. I don't think we can glean much from that. I do think it downgrades Rutschman a bit, being that he is a more powerful batter as a left-handed batter than a righty. So if he does go righty, it's going to downgrade his overall, uh, his overall, I would say, skill in that regard as far as trying to hit home runs. So I would downgrade Rutschman, but that's the only takeaway we have uh, from the park for tonight. Second thing to consider is a format, because the format changed uh, where it used to be based on outs. Be, be, uh, bad from before 2014 on, but from 2015 on, it's based on time instead. And that's made a pretty big difference. And if you watch the Derby, to me, it always seems like you see guys get kind of gassed. You see them get worn out as the round goes along. So it seems like a lot of physical big guys have won the Derby in this time. All of the winners from 2015 on have weighed at least 210 pounds, and four out of the seven have weighed at least 245. Uh, Aaron Judge is in there, Giancarlo Stanton, and Pete Alonso twice. So four out of seven winners, 245 pounds or heavier. Only two guys in this year's field that weigh that much or who weigh that much are Pete Alonso and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And not surprisingly, they have been in the same derby once. That was in Cleveland back in 2019. I was at that one, which is a lot of fun. And they met in the finals. Vlad put on a massive show. Alonzo eventually won. So it's not a huge surprise based on the weight trend that both those guys did do well in the one derby they were together back in 2019. As far as other weights go, Adley Rutschman listed at 230. Julio Rodriguez, 228. Luis Robert is 220. Adelis Garcia is 205. The two guys with low weights that I would deem to be kind of red flags uh, may give us some pause here. Randy Arosarena and Mookie Betts. Both those guys, uh, 185 and 180, respectively. So I would say for them, that's a bit of a concern. It's not a cross-off because, again, we're dealing with a sample of seven derbies. And it's paired with anecdotal evidence, watching guys get gassed um, and see seeing the physical guys kind of come through. So it's not fully conjecture, but I do think I would downgrade those guys a bit as a result of their weight. Finally, I do think it's worthwhile to consider batting statistics. I'd done a study a couple years ago about which numbers correlated best to success in the home run derby. And at the time, fly ball rate was a big key. And it makes sense because at the time, I think this was 2016, 2017 or so, it was right when they had switched to being timed instead of outs. If it's if you're a line drive batter, you can get you can run out of 10 outs pretty fast there. So I, I think that that's why we can potentially downplay that. Like Juan Soto was the winner last year, and Soto did have a better fly ball rate last year than typically he typically does, but he's never really been a huge fly ball guy. I do still want to look at it because Pete Alonso is the lone two-time winner in this time, and he puts the ball in the air a ton, but it's possible that that factor is not as important as it once was. So... The hand in this stuff doesn't really give us a huge leg up because uh, it's kind of just knocking down Rutschman. The weight stuff, I do think, bumps up Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Pete Alonso, And then it does bump down a bit, Mookie Betts and Randy Arosarena. And then as far as the stats go, we'll dig into those when we talk about the individual matchups. And lucky for us over at FanDuel, you can bet on the individual matchups in round one. So let's dig into those and see if there's any value here that we do want to take before we talk about the overall derby winner here in just one second. First round one match is Elise Robert taking on Adley Rutschman. Robert is minus 250, Rutschman plus 198. As mentioned, I'm pretty low on Rutschman, and that's as a result of the fact that he'll be left-handed if he is playing to his strengths, but right-handed if he's playing to the, the, the park strengths. I don't think that's a great you know mesh there. So I'm lower on him than I am on Robert. But the problem is that the price here is pretty steep. Minus 250 says to me that other betters who have bet into this market already are saying the exact same thing. Uh, Rutschman does have the weight edge. He does, um, you know, does have that for sure. But Robert is going to be the guy with the edge everywhere else as far as fly ball rate, barrel rate, launch angle, exit velo. Robert has the edge there. 
I think because this is a somewhat chaotic, hard to predict event, I can't get to minus 250 on Robert. Uh, but I think that makes it a stay away. I'm definitely not taking Rutschman as an underdog. To me, this one's a no bet. As always, no bet is better than a losing bet. So I'll pass on that first one. But in my head, if I'm filling out a bracket, I'm penciling Robert into round two based on pretty much everything that we discussed. The second round one matchup is going to be uh, Adelise Garcia taking on Randy Rosarena. Not the second matchup, but the one in the same side of that bracket as with Robert and Rutschman. Garcia is minus 144, and Rosarena is plus 188. Now, I thought maybe that uh, Garcia, when I looked at his way, could be a bit of a concern because he's a 205, but Rosarena is 185. Uh, Garcia does have the edge as well in fly ball rates, barrel rates, launch angle, and then exit velo pretty similar for those two guys. So you're getting Garcia at minus 144. I don't think that's a bad number by any means. Puts implied odds to a bit below 60%. I think that's pretty fair based on the factors that are in play here because he is 20 pounds heavier than a Rosarena and does have the edge elsewhere as well. So to me, I think if I'm looking at a first round matchup that I'd actually want to bet, the one I am most inclined to take would be Garcia minus 144 taking on a Rosarena. So I'll put him in the second round in my head again. And uh, I think that the minus 144 in Garcia is actually a decent first round bet uh, for the Derby. Looking at the other half of the bracket, we got the rematch from last year. Pete Alonso taking on Julio Rodriguez. Uh, Rodriguez knocking out Alonso. And now they get to go head to head once again. Alonso is minus 170. Rodriguez is plus 138 in this market. And I, I think that last year was not a huge surprise because... Rodriguez has prodigious power. And you look at his exit velo, 92.8 miles per hour this year. That is a massive number. It is higher than what Alonso has as well. But the weight favors Alonso, although Rodriguez is pretty high in that regard as well, which is a good thing for him. Fly ball rate favors Alonso. Barrel rate favors Alonso. Launch angle favors Alonso. We haven't seen Rodriguez putting the ball in the air a ton so far this year. And I think it I think that does still matter to an extent, even if it's not as big of a factor as it was back in the day. So to me, I might not feel good enough to bet Alonzo at minus 170, but I think it's pretty close. And I do feel good about putting him in, into the second round. I would say this is a pretty concerning matchup uh, for Alonzo for sure, because it's Rodriguez, but it's not concerning enough where I'm truly, truly dinging Alonzo when it comes to the outright market. Looking at the uh, home run derby winner market, but it is a factor to consider. I think that Alonzo will advance here into the second round. The winner of that one will face the winner between Mookie Betts and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And this is a massive weight discrepancy in this one. Uh, Betts listed at 180, Guerrero listed at 245. So that's a huge red flag for Mookie there. I will say, though, that Betts kind of from a data perspective, hangs everywhere else because his fly ball rate is 49%, whereas Guerrero's is 33%. Uh, barrel rate, pretty similar between the two guys. Uh, launch angle, 19.7% for Betts, 9.1% for Vlad. Now, in Vlad's defense, he crushes the ball when it's a line drive. And if he gives it a little bit more lift, as we saw back in 2019, he can go bananas. So... I don't want to overweigh this and suddenly be like, oh, maybe Betts is an underdog here, plus 172. I think that the launching or, or the exit velocity does matter for Vlad. The fact that he can absolutely crush a ball matters. And I think that's enough where I'm not going to take Betts at plus 172. I would say, though, if you're looking for a first round upset, Betts may be the guy best positioned to do so because of the launch angle, because of the fly ball rate, just because he's a very good overall hitter. I can't get there myself at plus 172 because I am concerned about the weight discrepancy between these two guys. Uh, Mookie is a phenomenal athlete, but at some point that format is pretty, pretty tough and it will wear on you. So I think there is some upset potential here with bets at plus 172. I will not take that myself, but I do think it's worth note noting that it's a bit of a concern for Guerrero. Let's put Vlad in the second round, though. Let's just assume that he does get past bets and is facing Alonzo in the second round as we turn our focus towards the outright market instead because these two guys are the two favorites of plus 320 for Alonzo, plus 350 for Guerrero. Once we get there, that's where the red flags around Guerrero become a bigger concern. I think that, again, he's a good option overall, 
But when we're facing Pete Alonso in the second round, we can be more nitpicky. Alonso has the has a similar weight to Guerrero, so uh, no difference there. Much bigger fly ball rate for Alonso, and uh, the barrel rate is also higher for him in large part because he puts the ball in the air more often. He can't barrel it if it's on the ground. So I would say in round two, that's where the concerns around Guerrero become even bigger. That's why I can't get to Guerrero, even though he is plus 350, so a bit longer than Alonso's odds at plus 320. I think the other takeaway from this is that this half of the bracket is brutal because Betts is a phenomenal player. Very good. And you've got three of the four heaviest batters in this field all in the bottom half of the bracket. So that could make you a bit wary of Alonzo, Guerrero, in this half, and uh, Rodriguez as well, because the path is going to be so tough for them to get to the final. The counterpoint to that would be that whoever from this side of the bracket makes it to the final, I think would be the favorites, unless it's uh, unless it's Betts, then maybe not then. But if it's anyone else, I'd say they'd probably be the favorite. So they might wind just just beating up on each other, which is a a something that definitely could happen. Um, and that's why it's hard to be super enthusiastic about the short rods. Let's take a look back at the top half. That was uh, Robert taking on Adelius Garcia in the second round for us. Weight does favor Robert. Uh, plus he's a 220. Uh, Garcia of 205. Uh, fly ball rate favors Garcia. Launch angle favors Garcia. Or sorry, barrel rate favors Garcia. Launch angle favors Robert. And exit velo favors Garcia as well. Given that Robert is not a whole lot heavier than Garcia, it's 15 pounds difference. I don't feel confident in saying that Robert should be uh, four to one, whereas Garcia is seven to one. I think that matchup will be pretty even. And again, I know that. Uh, Part of that's because Robert is more likely to advance in the first round than Garcia is. But in the second round, I could see that being a pretty competitive matchup. So I think that if I'm looking for a longer shot, Garcia is probably the one guy I consider because the top half of the bracket has a, an easier path in my eyes to get to the final. And he also is someone who does great out decently well beyond the weight being a bit lower. And again, it's 205. It's not as low as a Rosa Reina and Betts, at least, even though it's not uh, quite where he'd want it to be. So I think if I'm looking for a longer shot, I would look at Garcia at 7-1. to one. With that all said, I do feel like if I'm making a bet in the outright market, it would be on the favorite. Pete Alonso at plus 320. Again, the weight is there, 245. We want those big guys. He checks that box. Puts the ball in the air a ton. He is a massive barrel guy. Right-handed batter, which is great. Uh, again, Rutschman being the lone exception in that regard. And we've seen him do it twice before. He's won this event twice already, which means he knows that the format works in this exact same format. He has thrived in that format and taken down a lot of these same guys previously outside of Rodriguez. So if I'm betting the outright market, I think that Alonzo at plus 320 would be the way to go. It is a difficult path for sure to get from facing Rodriguez in the first round to all the way to the final. And he'll face a tough second round matchup as well. But I do feel like if he gets to the final, he'd be the pretty heavy favorite over everybody in the top half of the bracket. So to me, if I am betting the outright market, give me Pete Alonso plus 320. Again, with the massive caveat being, I don't have a model for this. I don't know if this is Correct. We're just looking for trends, looking for data we can identify that puts us in the right path towards identifying who will win this derby. That could lead us down the wrong path. We want to keep that in mind for sure. But um, I think I think we're feeling pretty good about this, and we'll see how it goes out. But again, the two bets considering most: uh, Lonzo plus three twenty to win it all, and then Adelis Garcia to win his first round matchup minus one forty four against Randy Arosarena. That's going to do it for today here on Covering the Spread. We are back once again tomorrow. Brandon Gadula is going to swing by. We're going to talk some golf with Brandon, as always, getting more back into our regular schedule. And some fun shows planned later on this week as well uh, as we get it set uh, for the second half of the MLB season. Do not forget to subscribe to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And also check us out once again over on the FanDuel YouTube page and on FanDuel TV+. Plus. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcasts. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across the Home Run Derby. Enjoy the action for tonight. Have fun. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.